So this is our usual canny demo. In the upper left-hand corner, we have the image from the camera. Hello, it's Jim from JustinHacks.com. On today's screencast, we are going to build OpenCV on board the NVIDIA Jetson AGX Xavier Developer Kit. Let's get started. One of the reasons that you may want to build OpenCV from source for the Xavier is to include GStreamer support. GStreamer allows external cameras to interface with the Xavier and be able to use OpenCV. Before we start, let's set up the Xavier for development. We will set up NVP model to mode zero. Because the OpenCV source code takes up a lot of space, let's compile on board the NVMe SSD. You'll remember in an earlier episode, we installed the SSD into our M2 key M slot. Let's switch over to our SSD. On the Jetson Hex account on GitHub, there is a repository named Build OpenCV Xavier. Let's get a copy of that address. We will clone the repository. And switch over to that repository's directory. This Xavier is running L4T 31.0.2, which was installed by Jetpack 4.1. Let's check out version one of this repository. And let's clear this off. Let's switch over to that particular tag. We have a few scripts available. We can build OpenCV, we can build and package OpenCV, and we can remove the OpenCV sources. Let's take a look at build and package OpenCV. You can use this script as a template and then add your options as needed. We are going to build OpenCV version 3.4.3 the architecture of the AGX Xavier is 7.2. The default install directory is slash user slash local. Here are some of our dependencies. We need to do a little bit of a patch here. We add Python support and GStreamer support. And then down here we have our CMake build options. One of the later ones that we've added for this particular application is TBB, which is threading building block. It enables parallel execution on the CPUs. And then the CPAC binary dev flag tells the system to build a .deb file as an installer for OpenCV. So with all that said, let's get started building. Let's take a look at the directions. Okay, let's put the OpenCV sources on the Xavier SSD and let's get to building. We're ready to install. Let's type in the password. Installation complete. Okay, so in the README, it tells you where it built the dev files. Let's go take a look at them. So you can see their little beady eyes looking at us here. We use CMake to configure the build system. There's quite a few options. Let's take a look at that. We will use CC Make. I always forget where it's installed. Let's take a look. I think it's here. The CMake list file is in the parent directory. So let's take a look at it. You can see that there are 13 pages of fun. These are all of the different options. 
Some of them are the ones that we set in our little script file. Others are defaults and others are up to us to set if we want to include them. Take a look and set them to your liking. We will quit out of this. We are now ready to run our demos. Let's clear everything off. It's time to run the demos. We are back in our repository directory, build OpenCV Xavier. Let's switch over to the examples directory. For the demo, we will be using two different cameras. The first camera is a Jetson TX1 camera plugged into the Xavier camera port. The second camera is a Logitech webcam. It's a C920. Let's run the demo with the webcam first. There I am. So this is our usual canny demo. In the upper left hand corner, we have the image from the camera. In the upper right hand corner, we convert that into black and white. We run a Gaussian blur here in the lower left hand corner, and then we do the edge detection in the bottom right. We can change some of the parameters around by using the comma button and the period button. So if we use the comma button on the keyboard, you can see that we detect more edges and if we use period, we will lessen that. So you can see in our GPU history that we are actually using the GPU to do this. Let's open up the onboard Xavier camera. See, it's a different angle. Interesting, it seems to be a little bit slower. You can tell the imaging in the cameras is quite a bit different. The webcam has the typical kind of blue overcast and the built-in camera has quite a bit of yellowish tint. Let's try closing up the webcam. So once the full screen, it appears to be fast. And it appears to be correct when you're doing just the canny detection. When it's running all four, it seems a little slow. It's interesting because it's running the same code as the webcam, it's just a different input path. Let's open our webcam back up. I don't know exactly what the issue is here. There's about a half a second delay, it looks like. This is the first time I'm running through these demos, so it's interesting to see that there's a performance difference. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.